All right, stuck on an island, a bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers right now are working furiously to free five American tourists facing gun charges in Turks and Caicos. Turks and Caicos. These charges carry a minimum 12-year sentence if they are found guilty. The U.S. delegation met with the Turks government officials this week, and they are asking for leniency and compassion, saying that these Americans had ammunition in their luggage inadvertently. But the meeting ended without a resolution. Meantime, Tyler Wenrick, he's a married father from Virginia, pleaded guilty to two counts of ammunition possession. His sentencing is scheduled for next week. He'll be the first to be sentenced. Joining me now, Congressman Bob Good of Virginia. He visited Turks and Caicos on behalf of Tyler, his constituent, as well as the four other Americans. He's also the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus. A congressman, thank you for being with us. After your visit there, how optimistic are you at this point that these Americans will come home soon? Well, we're prayerfully optimistic and hopeful that uh, they will show, as you said, compassion, discernment, discretion, and recognize that these Americans who are being held, they weren't coming with a, you know, a bunch of machine guns and loaded magazines. They actually had one or two stray bullets unbeknownst to them in the seam of their luggage, uh, in a secret hidden compartment that they wouldn't have found, in the lining of their suitcase. They thought that it was all emptied out, and they accidentally took it out of our country through TSA, by the way, where it wasn't discovered, and took it into Kirks and Caicos without their knowledge, and actually were apprehended, arrested when they were leaving the island with still that one or two uh, shells in their luggage. And so we're asking for them to be uh, treated uh, compassionately, as you said, with discretion here, and to just be given time served, be allowed to go home to their families. They were visiting the country, uh, celebrating a wedding, celebrating graduation, celebrating an anniversary, that sort of thing. These are middle-income Americans who've been held for weeks or even months in some cases and have had to spend tens of thousands of dollars to try to defend themselves, to pay bail, to pay for the cost of staying in the island because they're not being allowed to leave. And we're hopeful that uh, we made some progress with the government officials there to intervene. I know you met with Tyler while you were on the island. How did he appear to be doing? Well, he's obviously very concerned. He has a one-and-a-half-year-old son and a young bride at home, and they're worried that he's not going to see his son until the son is age 13 because the new law that Turks and Caicos put in place a few months ago has a 12-year minimum sentence for possession of a firearm or for possession of ammunition. But again, these Americans, uh, they had no intention, no knowledge that they were doing this. It was an accidental thing. For Tyler, when he was leaving the country or trying to leave Turks and Caicos, they too had to take his luggage through the scanner several times to find out where the stray two bullets were because they were not visible or detectable through normal search because they had fallen in again between the lining or uh, into the seams of the luggage. So he's concerned, obviously. Uh, and so we were able to meet with the governor, vice governor, premier, vice premier, and just ask them to consider the uh, stories of these Americans and the uh, unintended consequence of their law and uh, trying to make sure they understand the importance of the U.S. tourism industry, which is fully half of their economy, and we don't want to have to issue a travel advisory warning folks not to travel to Tur Turks and Caicos. And did they seem receptive to that consequence? They did. Uh, they, uh, I don't think they really knew the full stories of the Americans who were being detained and what actually happened. I don't think they were really getting the real gist of it until our visit. So we were able to visit with our constituents first and then visit with those government officials. Now, like our government, they have separation of powers, judicial branch versus executive branch, and we were able to meet with the executive branch. But we're hopeful that, uh, that uh, they're aware of the intended consequences, that they don't want these unintended consequences, and they'll revisit how they're treating tourists who make a mistake with no obvious criminal intent. Obviously, they weren't trying to harm or threaten anyone. You know, when you're carrying one or two stray bullets and you're trying to leave the island, not even knowing it's in your bag, obviously, there's no reason for you to be treated like a criminal who was coming with nefarious intent. One of the options, Congressman, on the table is the Customs Act. What would be the punishment under that and the parameters in this case? Well, that is one of the things that we've advocated for, is to try them or charge them under the Customs Act, which means they could just be released with a minor, maybe a fine. Uh, we really would prefer they not have any jail time or prison time. But in my case, Tyler, my constituent's already served two weeks. He's been there about a month, but two weeks before he and his family were to, able to come up with $15,000 to post bail. Now he's living uh, $5,000 a month, eat, literally eating beans and rice because he can't afford the expensive groceries there on top of the rent that he wasn't planning to pay. Uh, so we're hopeful that he would be released with just time served, maybe a fine, uh, maybe a, a, a reprimand not to come back to the country for some point in time. Obviously, he wouldn't do that anyway at this point. 
Do you believe it bolsters the argument to bring them home because now we have five Americans being detained versus just one in such a short amount of time and because there's so much attention being paid to it right now? Yes, and that's what we want to do is to heighten the awareness. They're arresting an American about every three weeks there right now. Again, we've got five uh, who are under detention at this point. And uh, so, yes, I think the awareness to it, and I think also the concern that we might have to, that we might press our State Department, the Biden administration, to issue a travel advisory or even a do not travel to warn Americans that you might be suffering consequences that you didn't anticipate for just a mistake. Uh, if you're someone who's ever owned a firearm, ever went hunting, ever used your luggage for that purpose, and there's a stray bullet there that you didn't know about that could cause you to suffer as much as 12 years in prison. Yeah, know before you go. It has a lot of us um, looking to travel, uh, making sure we do our homework, um, whether it's to Turks and Caicos or elsewhere. Uh, let's hope this gets resolved soon. We'll be following it closely. Congressman Bob Good, thank you uh, for your efforts on it and for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me.